Uh, right, let's say hello to tonight's guest. Uh, he's the much-loved uh, comedian and actor who's brought us classics such as Monty Python, A Fish Called Wonder, and of course, Faulty Towers. It's John Cleese. Hey! Hey. Thank you, Thank you. Oh, John, it Welcome, is good John. to have you back it's on the show. To be back again. We have already got tons of messages for you. We're just going to read a few. Uh -huh. Andrew says. The fire drill episode of Faulty yes. Towers is probably one of the funniest things I have ever seen in comedy. What does he mean, probably? <laughs> <laughs> when he answers the phone and screams, we're having it, it kills me every time. Uh, it is the best single scene in Faulty Towers, the fire drill. Oh, he'll be delighted I, I that think, you agree. Think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lucy says, I love Faulty Towers. I used to watch it with my family, and whenever I see the repeats, it reminds me of those precious family moments. Oh. Yeah, it's it's lovely. There are families out there who almost communicate with each other entirely. Quotes from yeah. Monty Python. Oh. There's one family where well, the game is to put a Faulty Towers quote in without anyone else realising <laughs> it's a fault. That's the game they play all the time. But, but it must feel warm and fuzzy that people still love it so yes, much. Yes, it's lovely. And an extraordinary thing is if I do meet and greet after my stage shows, it's lovely when 70-year-old men with a tear in their eye say, thank you for making me laugh. Or the oddest of all, people saying to me, quite a lot of them saying, thank you for helping me to get through difficult times. So I think of myself as a comedy therapist. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's nice, nice touch, nice touch. It is. Uh, right, so you're, you're bringing uh, Faulty Towers to the West End, yes, to the we're stage. Yes, on the stage. Yeah, how are you going to be adapting it for the stage? Well, we, we took three uh, episodes. We took some time to choose which three, and we put three episodes, and then we kind of dovetailed them together so that the whole thing... Uh, and then we have added a little bit from another episode. And uh, the episodes aren't... They don't go one, two, three. They all sort of... They start and then the next episode comes up and then we go back to the first and then the third. Brilliant. And then you have a, a final climax when they all sort of come together <laughs> and there's an extraordinarily funny moment there. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, Pete, one of the episodes is The Hotel Inspector, That's which right. people loved. And you say yourself that Bernard Cribbins, who stars in that one, yes. is one of the best guests well, that you had, had on. Extra, you see, there's so many good actors in this country. And Joan, Joan Sanderson as Mrs Richards for the hearing aid. But I have to say, if I had to give a prize to one, it would be Bernie Cribbins. And that's one of the reasons that we included that one. Then we got Mrs Richards and then we've got the, the Germans episode, of course, because you can't do that. I can't go without that. No. Classic. No, absolute classic. Um, now, you've got a brilliant actor called Adam Jackson Smith. Extraordinary. Uh, playing in Basel, of course. Now, uh, recently, after rehearsals, you popped into his dressing room, didn't you, for some words of encouragement? Yes. Have a look at this. Him, that's right. There it is. Have a look. Adam! John! Hi! Don't get out, John! Okay. Get out! Ah, good! Excellent! Just enjoy your performance very, very much. Thank you so much. What I was thinking was, in some of those scenes, it would be good if you could do it just a, a little bit better. Better? Do you think you could do it better? Louder and... Uh, Faster. Funnier. Funnier. And, above all, better. Better. OK? Good. Thanks, John. Excellent. Always happy to help. Bye-bye. Drop by any time. Better. And funnier. In good spirit. He oh, he's lovely. He's written. The only danger is he's going to be funnier than I am, in which case I shall have him fired. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> I doubt it. But anyway, um, has it been hard for you, John, letting go of the character no, that you know no, so you well? No, no, people don't understand about the Pythons is that we're all writers who happen to perform. So for us, the important thing is the writing bit. And once I've written it, then it's sort of I might play it or somebody else might. And, uh, and, no, it seemed the most natural thing in the world. And he's doing it... It's, uh, he, he, it's a little different from mine, which I like. I mean, what would be the point of a carbon copy? You know, mm. same with yeah. Sybil. AJ yeah. is absolutely terrific as Sybil, yeah. but she's a little different from... You know, Oh. Yeah, nice. Uh, well, one scene many people will remember from Faulty Towers is when Basil's car breaks down and he loses his temper. Oh, yeah. Let's remind ourselves of that moment. <laughs> right, well, this is it. I'm going to give you a damn good trashing. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing 
Well, it's made clear that's not in the stage show, of course. Oh, it's a shame. and it's a shame. Yeah. But, you know, you were saying yourself that to get that scene absolutely bang on, yeah. it was quite a lot of work, well, wasn't see, it? You see, comedy is extraordinarily complicated. It's much, much more complicated than drama. And in that case, I went off at the beginning and I got a branch and I came back and I said, rolling, and they said, yeah, we're shooting, and I hit it, and it wasn't funny at all because the branch was too rigid. Then I went and right. got a floppy one, and, and that wasn't funny either. And then I got one that was exactly right, and it becomes hilarious. Now, how do you explain That's, that? You can't. You see what I, I mean? I don't know. You it's, can't explain uh, that. Why? I, I, do not, I still don't understand it, and I don't understand a lot of comedy, but I can do things now instinctively without yeah. really knowing why I'm doing them, you know? Mm. Well, it worked, anyway. It worked. It, worked. it was hilarious. Um, um, there is some great news, though, for Faulty Towers fans. You and your daughter teamed up to write some new episodes, yes. I hear. Uh, what, what can the fans expect? Well, we're, we're trying to figure out how to do it. First of all, there's no point in setting it in Torquay, because we've done that. We've yeah. done it well. We can't do it any better. So we're going to do it in the Caribbean. And she's going to be uh, my illegitimate daughter because <laughs> one pretty lady one day came and stayed in Forty Towers when Sybil wasn't there, and she <laughs> <laughs> seduced Basil for a bet. <laughs> that, that is brilliant. That sounds Do you know, I love that you've placed it in the Caribbean yeah, as well. That's smart. very handy, isn't very, it? Very, well, it's very, it's a, also, there'll be much more stuff shot outside the hotel, you yeah. see. And you've got all the w water sports and all that kind of thing. So we've been working on that, but it's a slow start because when you're trying to create new characters, you're going to have to live with them all through the series, so you've got to get them right, and that takes a lot of time. Yeah. Loads for people to look forward to. Thank you very much, John. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. pleasure. Uh, Faulty Towers, the play starts on the 4th of May at the Apollo Theatre London on Shaftesbury Avenue. Now then, still to come tonight, former All Saints singer, All Saints singer, Shazne Lewis, <laughs> tells us all about taking on a gig of a lifetime with Coldplay and how she's now preparing for Glastonbury. Oh, it's a big gig, that one. Right, now it's time to talk music with a Brit award-winning singer who was part of one of the UK's biggest girl bands and is now back to top the charts. But before we speak to former All Saints star Shazne Lewis about a new music, let's remind ourselves of the hits that never, ever get old. Oh my gosh, R listening nice trip, to one, the songs makes me want to go home and put the whole album on. Some classics. It's so Some brilliant. Classic and of course, you know, you remember the combat trousers and all that. <laughs> Have you still got them? Well, I had, we were always given lots of stuff back in the 90s, so I kind of kept a few pieces and I put them in the loft. And my daughter, that's now 14, is um, wearing them because Radium it's all them. come back around. It works. Perfect. Yeah. You, like baggage, a, you like a combat trouser, Big baggy trouser, trouser is, is the vibe, usually, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, you're now releasing your first solo album in 20 years. I this know. is exciting. Um, let's have a listen to the latest single featuring Shola Amma called Good Morning. I mean, I got a glimpse of him. Was that General Levy? That was the wow. General Levy. Wow. Yeah. And we've got to share now, because people will be going, oh, yeah, I know the name. Oh, yeah, the song, the Jungle is Massive yeah. song. Yeah, I mean, everybody, that song I wanted huge. you to sing it. I, have you seen how quick he does that? <laughs> I ain't going anywhere near it, anywhere near it. But that, wow, pulled him out of nowhere, that's yeah. unbelievable. Um, now, let's talk about, obviously, you back. You know, one of your first solo gigs yeah. uh, on your return is yeah. going to be Glastonbury, which yeah. is absolutely huge. How are you, like, feeling about it? I'm really excited. 
That's I good. mean, I, I most likely be nervous just before I go How on. How nervous do you get? Because it's a huge crowd. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't usually get nervous, and I prefer that. People say nerves are good, but right. I prefer not to have nerves because <laughs> I like to be in control. Um, and also your timing's better if you're relaxed, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I always find that if I'm nervous, it just it throws me off, and that's like a bad gig yeah, for me. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. But straight into Glastonbury, that's big. Yeah. I mean, John, do you do you get nervous at all? You strike me as somebody who is well, calm I, as a I don't get about. nervous when I do my stage shows, right. you see, because that means that people have actually paid good money for tickets. Yeah. yeah. So they don't do that if they hate me. Yeah. That's so, a good way to look at it. You yeah. see, they're sort of pre-selected to like me, so I don't yeah. get it. Uh, and I, I don't, I'm not, I would be very nervous if I had to remember yeah. words. Yeah. Do you ever worry about lyrics? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, yeah. no. Yeah. See, when people pay for tickets to come and watch football, they usually come because they hate you. If you're, if you're away from, it depends what if, you're, if you're away from home, they literally pay tickets to shout at you right. the yeah, whole game. Well, so, yeah. But there's 50% <laughs> chance they like you. This is so true. Good. There's a 50% chance. Um, you got your, I mean, your, your kids were obviously very little when you were going through your career of All Saints, but yeah. they are a lot bigger now and, yeah. they, can, and they can enjoy uh, being a part of it with you. What's that like, not only for them, but for you as well? I love it. It's great. I mean, it's good to sort of, in terms of, you know, they go to very academic schools, so I think having creative parents just kind of adds that balance ah, for yeah. them. So, you know, they, they enjoy it. Mm. Um, they came and did my video to Kiss of Life, which was which was really good because um, 20 years... Have you got that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can yeah. see my they, daughter they there. gorgeous, the children. That's my well. son there as well, yeah. It must add something, though, to the experience for you now as well. Oh, it's so much. I mean, the song was written about them anyway, and I did ask their permission if I could use old clips in the video. Oh, OK, they yeah. Would be in the video, and they were cool with that. And it means, yeah, it means a lot more. I mean, 20, what, 25 years later, everything means a lot more now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, and it's yeah. a lot deeper. And um, the first video that I did on my first album was myself and my husband. So it was lovely 20, 20 years later yeah, to do a video with the kids. It yeah, just kind yeah. of told its story yeah, and yeah, how we've probably. evolved. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, we all get kicked to the side once the kids arrive. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's very true. Off okay, your pot. Bye. <laughs> Bring the kids in. So true. Um, you were talking, John, about working with your daughter. Well, you see, it's rather nice. And Forty Towers, I wrote yeah. with my first wife. Then Fish Called Wander and Fierce Creatures, my older daughter was in both, and now I'm writing with my younger yeah. daughter. Beautiful. Yeah, that it's is lovely. special, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. she's got a... Well, my younger daughter's got a really wicked sense of humour. You think I've got a black sense of humour? You should get her on the <laughs> right. show. Right, yeah. <laughs> Let's get it on, John. Um, now, you performed with Coldplay, Chesney, a couple of yeah. years ago in Wembley, yeah. and apparently Chris Martin, who's amazing, yeah. nice guy, isn't he? But, he? but he just rang you, didn't he, out of the blue, and that was quite a shock to yeah. With. Well, I knew he was, somebody um, had said he wanted my number. I didn't know what for. And uh, it's so funny because I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the, to, to the loo and I saw, a, a, I could see a text message and just the f first few lines I thought, that doesn't seem like it's from many of my friends. And I thought, I'm not reading that until the morning because if not, I'll get too excited and I won't be able to sleep. So I waited till the next morning and I saw that he'd written me a lovely message. And then he called me and he was really cool. He was like, look, we're big fans of yours. We love you as a songwriter and we'd, we'd really uh, appreciate it if you'd come and do a performance. And I was like, oh, you don't have to ask me twice. Yeah. Really exciting. <laughs> How I was chill, really by the way, just to wait till the next morning. That's and I mean, yeah. the, show, the show in itself, I don't know if you've ever been to a Coldplay show, yeah. but it was just insane. Incredible, and yeah. it was magical. And I actually couldn't even sleep that night when I got home. I just, it was just all of it was still inside my head. It was amazing, amazing yeah. band. Oh, but it's going to well, be great. Chazney's new album, Pages, is out on the 17th of May. Thank and you so much. And my show is at the Jazz Cafe on the 14th. Great, what? lovely. Jazz Cafe. Jazz Cafe oh. on the 14th. Oh, nice. There you go. Really? Yeah. There you go. So, John, I've got a question for you here. Um, oh. Arda asks, where did the idea for Faulty Towers come from? Oh, oh yeah. when we were shooting for Monty Python way back when it was 71, we went down and stayed at this hotel in Torquay called, um, can't, what was it called? I've forgotten now. Glen Eagles. Okay. And uh, the, the, the guy who ran it should be the last person who should ever run a hotel. <laughs> you know, it was just gloriously rude. For no, 
no reason at all. <laughs> and um, when Connie and I wanted to write something for the BBC, we said, well, let's, let's do it in the hotel. Because the advantage of doing it in the hotel is everyone knows how things are supposed to happen. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? It's wow. not an unfamiliar environment. Perfect. What a great answer yeah. to finish Spot on. on. Uh, that's all we've got time for tonight. Thank you so much to our guests. Yeah, so we'll be back tomorrow with Hollywood star Rebel Wilson, EastEnders Bobby Brazier, and Nikki Fox will be here with Watchdog. Have a great evening. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.